Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, worldwide. Hello, everyone. You have stumbled into Carrie's Corner. Uh, welcome to Daylight Savings Time in the United States. Uh, hopefully, for the majority of you, you are still watching at your normal time. Uh, in the U.S., we are an hour later now. Uh, normally, I was at 8.30 my time. Now, we're at 9.30. AM. Uh, so for those of you, I know I'm worried about my girl Arlene, who is always consistent in watching the show. So hopefully she got the memo in our time zone that this is the time we are. Uh, but I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm so excited to see you here today. If you are new, if you've never been to Carrie's Corner, you uh, the thing you need to know is I like to know where you're tuning in from. So please make sure you drop in the chat who you are, where you're tuning in from. Hello, Lady Ethel, a pleasant day to you as well. Arlene, you made it. I'm so happy. I was worried about you and the time change. I didn't know how that was affecting everyone. Um, it's just crazy what an hour will do to your schedule. Uh, spring forward in the U.S. and fall, do we do this? But for some reason in the United States, we're still doing it. And it is just... Just one hour will really throw you off. But we're so excited to have you here today. I am really, really excited because today we do have a special guest from the OET, the OET, the Occupational English Test. The Occupational English Test is, it's now 8.30 in Jamaica. Yep, 8.30 in Jamaica. So you guys don't, don't do the daylight savings time. And it totally makes sense. Um, but the OET, which I'm super excited to have this um, special guest on the show today, Jack from the OET. He's been with us before. He's coming back to break down some of the test tips and tricks to do well and perform well on the OET. And today he's going to talk about listening. And I know it's one other section. I want to say it's reading, but I could be wrong. Um, but I know he's definitely talking about listening Listening because we had to check our audio for the show today. He's actually, we're going to play some listening segments that you would hear on the OET test. So today is a really special sneak peek into what the OET actually sounds like what those questions look like, how to answer those questions, how to approach those questions, how to prepare for those questions. Um, another great thing about the fact that, yes, today we are highlighting the OET, we're spotlighting the OET and the great things that they do. But if you're not planning on taking the OET, number one, always keep your options open, right? A majority of states are going to have multiple options. Um, and the OET is becoming more and more widely accepted across the U.S. So Always keep your options open, number one. Number two, these tips and tricks can be applied to other exams. They can be applied to other exams. And the OET does such a great job of preparing their test takers. Um, and so don't tune out today just because you're like, I want to take the PTE. This is a listening skill. The listening skills are applicable to all of the tests. Every test has a listening portion. So very, very important for you to stay tuned in today and to take these tips and tricks, learn them, apply them. Um, if you're preparing for the NCLEX, I've heard a lot of nurses talk about how preparing for the NCLEX and preparing for the OET are very, very similar because they're healthcare based. So if you're preparing for the NCLEX, these are a lot of tips and tricks that you can use, a lot of study skills that you can use that are relatable, transferable between preparing for the two tests. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, because of the audio situation, uh, Jack will be leading the show today. I will be in the background. I'm going to be like Tracy in the background running uh, the presentation and clicking and making sure things work because if not, there's this weird echo thing. And we want to make sure you guys hear and get all of this information. Hello in Ethiopia. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Jack onto the show and introduce him. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. Thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be able to speak more about OET with, with everyone here on the call today. Absolutely. We are so excited. The OET is expanding in where they're being offered. It's expanding in um, where it's widely accepted. Um, it's all over the, the United Kingdom. The OET is widely recognized, correct? 
That's correct. Yes, we do have, we're, we're growing our recognition there. We're also growing our recognition in Canada and of course in the U.S. as well. So it's, um, yes, it, it's something that we're, we're constantly working towards. Yeah, I, I often tell people if you're a healthcare worker, the OET is the only test out there designed specifically for healthcare workers. It's the only one. No other test can give you that, um, which is super cool. I think it's super great. Um, when you register for the OET, do you differentiate between um, the healthcare worker positions? Yes. Yeah, so there are different um, versions of OET available. So depending on which, um, you know, what, what the purpose of the test is and what profession you're looking for, um, you would register for one of the different 12 versions. Wow. 12 different versions of the test. I think you even have one because we have um, quite a few um, medical laboratory technicians, techs who, who kind of chime in to Carrie's Corner every now and then. And we love our med lab techs. But you have a test kind of for that position as well, correct? We don't have one specifically for med techs, um, but we do. A lot of med techs um, have taken the pharmacy test, for example. So that is the one that's most closely aligned for, for med techs. Um, we have considered creating a version specific for med techs, um, but of course that takes a while, the whole um, test development process. But it is something that, that we're considering because we have seen a demand for it. That's awesome. Now, do you hear that, MedLab Techs? There's going to be a test just for you. It's not always just about the RNs, right? Um, <laughs> although we love our RNs. We're super appreciative of our RNs. All right. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to you, Jack, um, and I will pull your presentation up and we will take it away. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. All right. I'm not sure I'm not if sure others, if on, others the on the call are hearing, are hearing that, as, that well. as well. There's still an echo coming through? Yes. Yes. Echo. Echo. Oh, no. Um, not 100% sure. We might just have to power through. Okay. The okay. other thing is like just read, 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 you know, um, as, as a, a, as a, as a prompt, prompt rather, than rather than playing the audio, audio. Cause I have, cause to, I have to transcribe as well. well. But then, but then, then I think, I think maybe, maybe stop, stop shot audio, audio so that there's so no, there's no, Go, go. Did that make it any better? Let's try. Um, yes, I'm not hearing that go anymore. Perfect. Okay, so we're, we're good to go. And I can just read the, the audio um, transcript. Okay, wonderful. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so a, as um, Carrie was kind enough to mention, my name is Jack Waz. I'm the Education Specialist with OET. Um, today we are going to be talking about OET listening. Um, so I had talked to Carrie about using other um, other workshops in, in the future as well. So, so, so do stay, stay tuned for a reading workshop and we can even do a speaking and listening workshop um, down the line as well. But today we're talking about OET reading. Um, so this is the agenda, um, an overview, sorry, listening for today. So the overview is OET listening. We're going to talk about the different contexts of OET listening, some skills and how you can improve them, and then hopefully have some time at the end for, for Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start out today with just the basics of OET listening. So can you tell me from the start, um, this is just, if you would like to write in the chat, it'd be great to get some participation from the audience. Um, how many parts are there in OET listening? How long does this subtest take? And what kinds of audios will you see? Okay, so just three questions there about OET listening. You might have been um, on another um, webinar with me earlier. So feel free to write, um, your thoughts in the chat about these three questions. I can give people a few seconds to write, and then we can go to the next slide to kind of share, share your answers. 
And again, if you don't feel like writing in the chat or you're not able to do so, you can also just think about your answers and we can cover them on the next slide as well. All right, let's go to the next slide then. And we can go over the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. Um, there are three parts to OET listening. It takes around 40 minutes total. So in part A, you read two separate consultations between a healthcare professional and a patient. Each audio has 12 questions, so there's 24 total. In part B, you hear six short dialogues or monologues similar to what you would hear in the workplace. So for example, handovers of a patient, safety briefings, discussions about medication or surgery, and there's one question per audio in part B. And in part C, you hear two long presentations, which are around four to five minutes each. And these are similar to a podcast or something you would hear at a conference or seminar as part of professional development. And each audio has six questions each. All right, so let's look more closely at the three contexts you deal with in the OET listening subtest. These three contexts are consultations, workplace communication, and professional development. Those are the three contexts that you contexts that you will engage with. So let's um, Consultations, of course, are the part A context, right? You listen to a conversation between a healthcare professional and a patient, and your task is to complete a healthcare professional's notes. That's, as I mentioned in the last slide, is the context for part A. So for part A, you will always hear a context statement first, which tells you who the speakers are. In this example, it's a physiotherapist talking to a new patient. So let's think about um, the, the question that's on the slide. If we can click next, so that question, yes. So what do you expect to hear, right? Our context is, here's the context. You hear a physiotherapist talking to a new patient called Ray Sands. What do you expect to hear in this conversation? I'll give people a, a minute or so to, to write their thoughts. Um, and then we can go to the next slide as well. What might you hear in this type of conversation? Okay, so as people are thinking and writing in the chat, um, some of the things that you might um, encounter, right, if we're thinking about a physiotherapist are back pain, um, treatment, diagnosis, history, medicine, right, any of these things. Um, so next, um, here are four questions that I have about the audio, right? Um, as I said, these are not OET listening questions, just my questions and things for you to keep in mind when you're listening to the audio. So before I read the audio for you, I have the transcript here. Um, I'm going to play these four, read these four questions for you. What is his problem? When did it start? How did it happen? And what has happened since then? Okay, and, and Carrie let me know that she's gonna try it with the audio. So let's go ahead and play that audio. It's Mr. Sands, isn't it? Uh, that's right, uh, Ray Sands. Now, I think you've been referred to me because you're suffering from sciatica. Uh, that's right. Uh, not for the first time, actually. OK. Well, I've got some notes here, but perhaps you can tell me in your own words about any previous bouts of sciatica you've had, uh, what treatment you had, what worked for you, anything else you can remember. right -o. Well, it all started when I hurt my back, ooh, about uh, 18 months ago now. Okay. I was giving somebody a hand with a heavy suitcase and I felt it go, oh. you know, woof, just like that. Mm. 
Anyway, I slowly got over that, despite occasional flare-ups, and then, out the blue, about a year ago, sciatica developed. Um. Mm. And it was six months till that finally cleared up altogether. Now it's come back in, well, in the last month or so, I'd say. All right, so thank you for, for playing that for us. Um, so now um, let's go let's go to the next slide here. Um, and I want people to think about the questions to these answers, right? So the first thing we had was, what is his problem? And we have the answer, of course, was sciatica back pain. Next question, when did it start? about 18 months ago. How did it happen? Lifting a suitcase. And what has happened since then? It cleared up and now has returned, right? So this just gives you an example of the type of questions you can think about when listening to an OET listening part. Of course, as I said, these four questions are not official OET listening questions, although we will get to some of those at some point. These are just kind of questions to get you thinking about the audio. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to listen again. I believe the audio would, should play for you one more time. Um, and I want you to try to fill in the, um, the missing piece in the case notes here, right? So you can see a snippet of the case in of the case notes, right? It says patient 18 months ago, one year ago, six months ago, last month. So it talks about what has happened in the timeline of this patient. And there's a word missing in, in number one. So I want you to listen again and try to fill in the blank for number one. Come in. It's Mr. Sands, isn't it? Uh, that's right, uh, Ray Sands. Now, I think you've been referred to me because you're suffering from sciatica. Uh, that's right. Uh, not for the first time, actually. OK. Well, I've got some notes here, but perhaps you can tell me in your own words about any previous bouts of sciatica you've had, uh, what treatment you had, what worked for you, anything else you can remember. right -o. Well, it's all started when I hurt my back, ooh, about uh, 18 months ago now. OK. I was giving somebody a hand with a heavy suitcase and I felt it go, oh. you know, woof, just like that. Mm. Anyway, I slowly got over that, despite occasional flare-ups, and then, out the blue, about a year ago, sciatica developed. Mm. Mm. And it was six months till that finally cleared up altogether. Now it's come back in, well, in the last month or so, I'd say. All right. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and I want people to think about their answers for a second or write in the chat and then we can go through the, the correct answer as well. So I see some people are writing in the chat already. This is great. Okay. I see um, Lady has, has responded, has shot an answer. That's great. Anyone else, if you have any answers you would like to write in or think about them. And then, all right, if we could go to the next slide, we can share that answer here. One more, I think. Oops, one more again. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There's a lot of transitions on these slides. It can, it can be a little tricky. <laughs> um, so, right, we can see the answer here. Notice that the only accepted answers come directly from the audio. You cannot change a word or add any words for that matter. These are the only possible answers for this question. So let's do another activity with this short extract. On the next slide, I'm going to show you the transcript, but I've removed some words. Again, this is not what happens in OET listening, but it is a good way to practice listening for detail. So on this slide, you can see the transcript for this section. OK, so I would like you to listen one more time and fill in the gaps in the conversation. So look, you have one, two, three, four and five, five and six. 
There are six different gaps in this conversation. So we're going to play the audio one more time. And I would like you to try to fill in those gaps in the conversation. Come in. It's Mr. Sands, isn't it? Uh, that's right, uh, Ray Sands. Now, I think you've been referred to me because you're suffering from sciatica. Uh, that's right. Uh, not for the first time, actually. OK. Well, I've got some notes here, but perhaps you can tell me in your own words about any previous bouts of sciatica you've had, uh, what treatment you had, what worked for you, anything else you can remember. right -o. Well, it's all started when I hurt my back, ooh, about uh, 18 months ago now. OK. I was giving somebody a hand with a heavy suitcase and I felt it go, oh. you know, woof, just like that. Mm. Anyway, I slowly got over that, despite occasional flare-ups, and then, out the blue, about a year ago, sciatica developed. Mm. Mm. And it was six months till that finally cleared up altogether. Now it's come back in, well, in the last month or so, I'd say. All right. Thank you for playing that. So let's go to the next slide now. We're going to share the answers. And I want you to think about your score on this section, right? So we can see here, number one, bouts. Number two, worked. Number three, a hand. Number four, we have flare-ups and the blue. Number five, we have cleared. And number six, we have I'd um, or so. It should say or so. I think that it moved over a little bit um, in the last month or so, I'd say. Okay, so great. Uh, I would like you guys, um, feel free to write in the chat um, what your score was. Uh, one thing that I know um, I want to mention is that we're only playing the audio once each time to kind of replicate the situation that you would have in, in OET listening in part A, where you only get to listen to the case notes once. Um, so that's kind of why we're, we're only playing it once each time, um, in case anyone was, was wondering. So feel free to write in the chat um, how many you got correct. Um, let's go ahead and go on to the next slide here. Um, yes, feel free to write in your score. And now we're going to move on. Um, what I have here um, on this slide, I'm going, there are seven expressions from the audio, right? You can see these listed here. And then the next thing I have are the definitions, um, some possible definitions for these words. So what I would like you to do is match the word on the left with the definition on the right. So if we could advance the slide one more, I should get those definitions listed there. There they are, okay. So we have six words and six um, possible definitions. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds to match the words on the left with the definitions on the right. I believe if you hit that blue circle it should start the countdown. If not, I can, of course, manually do it. Oh, there we go. Countdown has started. Match the words on the left with the definitions on the right. Feel free to write your answers in the chat after we're finished.
All right, so feel free. I see some people writing their answers in the chat already. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide to see our answers. All right, so they, those have rearranged for us. So of course, for number one, the answer is B. Number two, G. Number three, D. Number four, C, number five, A, number six, E, and number seven, F. So let's go, um, I, I would like you, feel free again to write your, um, how many you've got right in the, in the chat. Um, otherwise, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next part here. How many did you get right out of eight? I would love to hear. And then let's continue here with the next slide. All right. So when it comes to listening part A, listening to consultations, the important skills you need are following a patient-centered consultation, non-technical language, idiomatic language, listening for detail, and spelling, right? Here are some resources that you can try out. So if we can continue, I have some practice ideas. So YouTube, one thing that you can listen to is GPS behind closed doors, um, consultations and for health rather, feel free to, 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 to search for those in YouTube, practice test transcripts, like the one that we are just um, engaging with, and accent familiarization, right? One thing you might notice um, when listening to this audio is that they're speaking UK English. So it's important to be familiar with different types of accents when, when engaging with OET listening as well. All right, so now that we've covered consultation, let's move on to workplace communication. This is the kind of audio you'll hear in listening part B. All right. So like in part A, you'll get a context statement. So in this case, you hear part of a morning brief on a hospital board, right? That is the, the context that you're giving here. Um, so again, I would like people to think about what do you expect to hear in the audio if this is the context statement? You hear part of a morning briefing on a hospital ward. So, so let's go let's ahead, go and, ahead listen and listen to the audio. the audio. Right, so overnight admissions to the ward. Greg, could you start us off? Sure. We have Sue Deans in bed five. She's a 54-year-old female who was brought into the emergency department by police overnight. Mm -hmm. She has a history of poorly controlled paranoid schizophrenia. She presents with chronic persecutory and paranoid delusions and also significant thought disorder. Hmm. She's to remain in high dependency unit care until the stabilization of her symptoms. We'll be observing her every 15 minutes and monitoring the level of her distress, psychosis and any response to interventions offered. Okay. I'll review the clinical and detention status this afternoon. Now, what's the plan for discharge? Social work interventions required for placement and community support options, mm -hmm. and that's been booked for tomorrow. Also, an application for the appointment of legal guardian may be required. Right. We will consider that at tomorrow's ward round. All right, so let's go on to the next slide. Um, we're going to play it again, but I would like you to listen to, uh, think about rather, think about these five questions when we're playing it again, okay? Who is the patient? Why is she there? What's her background? What's the plan for today? What's the long-term plan, okay? So think about those questions as you're listening and let's go ahead and play again. Right, so overnight admissions to the ward. Greg, could you start us off? Sure. We have Sue Deans in bed five. She's a 54-year-old female who was brought into the emergency department by police overnight. Mm -hmm. She has a history of poorly controlled paranoid schizophrenia. 
She presents with chronic persecutory and paranoid delusions and also significant thought disorder. Mm. She's to remain in high dependency unit care until the stabilization of her symptoms. We'll be observing her every 15 minutes and monitoring the level of her distress, psychosis and any response to interventions offered. Okay. I'll review the clinical and detention status this afternoon. Now, what's the plan for discharge? Social work interventions required for placement and community support options, and that's been booked for tomorrow. Also, an application for the appointment of legal guardian may be required. Right. We will consider that at tomorrow's ward round. All right. So hopefully you were able to get through some of these questions. Um, if not, don't worry. We're actually going to look at the transcript next and go by each of, go through one of these each of these questions one by one. So let's go to the next slide here, and we're going to go through these questions as I mentioned one by one. So let's start out with the first question. You can see the question number one: Who is the patient? So we have our transcript here. Let's think about what the answer can be and click next and we can see our answer highlighted, right? As we heard, the answer is Sue Deans. She's a 54 year old female, all right? That's our question number one. Next question here, why is she here? So again, think about what the answers might be and we can see the answer highlighted. She presents with chronic her soup her secretory and paranoid delusions and also significant thought disorder. That is a hard word for me to read. I'm not very familiar with that one um, of being pursued, of course, is what that word refers to. Um, but that is our second question here. Moving on to the third question, what's her background? What's her background, right? So think about what the answer might be for that one. And let's go ahead and highlight that question. She has a history of poorly controlled paranoid psychophenia, all right? So that is her um, background, right? So um, hopefully you guys are, this is making sense with what you've heard in the audio. Obviously, it's easier having the transcript here for you to read through. All right, next question here. What's the plan for today, right? So again, think about what the answer might be for this one based on what you've heard and looking at the transcript and then of course we can see the um the answer highlighted here she's to remain in high dependency unit care until the stabilization of her symptoms we'll be observing her every 15 minutes and monitoring the level of her distress psychosis and any response to interventions offered all right, that's our plan for today. Move on to the next question here. We have the longer term plan, right? So again, think about what the answer to that one might be based on the audio. And then let's go ahead and highlight that. Now, what's the plan for discharge, right? That's kind of a, um, that's a hint for you that what comes after will be the answer to this question. What's the plan for discharge or the longer term plan? Social work interventions required for placement and community support options. And that's been booked for tomorrow. Also, an application for the appointment of legal guardian may be required. That's the longer term plan in this, um, in this case. All right, so now let's look at the Part B question for this task, right? So in Part B, there's an audio and there's one question for each task. Um, so in this case, it's about asking about a specific detail. What is the plan for today? Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Some Part B's might ask for a broader question, but this one is quite specific. What's the plan for today? So let's go to the next slide. You can see the three options here. Of course, they don't use the same words as in the audio, but they're asking about the audio. So based on our listening and the script today, what do you believe is the right answer? Um, feel free to participate in the chat. Um, think about what the right answer might be based on what you've heard. 
All right, and then let's go ahead to the next slide. And that is correct. The, the answer for this, what is the plan for the patient today? Her emotional state will be carefully observed, right? Based on what we've heard and the audio, that is the answer here. So if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna show you why this answer is correct, right? I've highlighted the part where they talk about this. We'll be observing her every 15 minutes and monitoring the level of her distress psychosis and any response to interventions offered, right? That is where the correct answer is coming from in the transcript. All right, All right. Just your knowledge, this question was from sample test one on the OET website. So um, I will talk about sample tests at later um, time permitting, but of course, checking out the sample tests on our website and even looking through the transcripts is a great way for you to prepare for the listening test. Okay, so now let's see what kinds of skills you need for, for workplace communic communication, um, which again, have to do with listening part B. So the skills are awareness of workplace communication, right? So things like team briefings, handovers, healthcare professional um, patient dialogues, of course, we have to be able to identify detail. We have to identify opinion and also identify purpose. Those are the skills that we need for this section. So now let's go over to some ways that you can practice. Um, so again, we have some more YouTube recommendations here. Um, reality TV shows, right? You can search YouTube in your country to, to think about reality TV shows. Um, that have to do with a healthcare focus. Um, of course, practice test scripts are the last thing, and that's kind of what we modeled here today on the call using the, the script for the audio. All right, so this brings us to the third context, which is professional development. And of course, this is the type of audio that you'll hear in listening part C. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so this is another audio that we're going to hear. Um, and as, as always, there is a context statement. So you hear an interview with a cardiologist called Dr. Jack Robson, who is an expert on Chagas disease. Okay, so we're talking we're about talking Chagas, Chagas disease, disease today. today. What do you expect to hear in this audio? Um, I want you to think about that. Um, and maybe feel free to write it in the chat if you um, if you would like to. Um, otherwise, just think about the answer. What might you expect to hear today? Um, let's listen to the start of the conversation and focus on the question the interviewer asks. Okay, so we're focusing on the question that the interviewer asks. Um, so, what is Chagas disease? And why is it referred to as a neglected disease? That's what we're going to think about. And let's go ahead and play the audio. Today, we're talking to Dr. Jack Robson, a cardiologist and Chagas disease specialist in the USA. Dr. Robson, what is Chagas disease? And why is it referred to as a neglected disease? Chagas is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Most sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect, commonly known as the kissing bug, which mm. carries the parasite. Right. People often don't realize they've been bitten, and during the initial phase of the infection, symptoms are normally mild or absent. Okay. Seventy percent of those infected never develop complications. For the other 30 percent, the disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years, but it eventually enters a chronic phase characterized by serious cardiac, digestive system, and neurological disorders. About 7 million people worldwide are thought to have Chagas, but it attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America, where it's endemic. Mm. You need resources to force significant action. Right, I see. All right, thank you for playing that for us. Um, so again, this is a longer audio, which is what you can expect in, in um, part C. Um, so let's go ahead to the next slide. 
we are going to listen one more time. And this time, again, I have that transcript for you so you can follow along with the transcript as you're listening. Let's go ahead and hear it. Today we're talking to Dr. Jack Robson, a cardiologist and Chagas disease specialist in the USA. Dr. Robson, what is Chagas disease and why is it referred to as a neglected disease? Chagas is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Most sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect, commonly known as the kissing bug, which mm. carries the parasite. Right. People often don't realize they've been bitten, and during the initial phase of the infection, symptoms are normally mild or absent. Okay. Seventy percent of those infected never develop complications. For the other 30 percent, the disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years but it eventually enters a chronic phase characterized by serious cardiac, digestive system, and neurological disorders. About 7 million people worldwide are thought to have Chagas, but it attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America, where it's endemic. Mm. You need resources to force significant action. Right, I see. All right. All right. So thank you for, for playing that. Um, so let's go on to the, okay, so we, we have the, the question here on this slide. What is Chagas disease, right? I want you to think about that um, in terms of this transcript. And then let's go ahead to the next slide. We can share the answer highlighted here. Chagas is caused by a parasite called, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one, most sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect, right? There's some more information about it. During the initial phase of the infection, symptoms are normally mild or absent. All right, and then even some more information, but it but eventually enters a chronic phase characterized by a serious cardiac digestive system and neurological disorder, right? These are um, some more facts about the disease that we can pull from the audio and the transcript. Next thing, next question we have, why is it referred to as a neglected disease? So let me let people think about that for a second. Why is it referred to as a neglected disease? Take some time to think about that. Feel free to write in the chat if you would like, and then we'll go to the next slide and kind of go over our answers. All right, so as we can see highlighted here, Chagas attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a, a, a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America where it's endemic. You need resources to force significant action. All right, so that is the answer to this question. Um, so now let's see the Part C question, right? This is the official OET Part C question from the sample test for, for this, um, for this um, audio. Why does Dr. Robson regard Chagas as a neglected disease? So let's go to the next slide here. We can see our three answer choices. A, because of the social groups it mainly affects. B, because patients often don't realize they're infected. Or C, because its impact is severe in a relatively small number of cases. So again, think about what the answers might be. Feel free to write them in the chat if you would like. Um, so based on what you've heard in the transcript, what do you think the answer would be for this Part C question? All right, let's go to the next slide here. Okay, so hopefully based on what you've heard and what you've seen, you came to the same conclusion that, that, that we have and that the correct answer for this is letter A, because of the social groups it mainly affects. So let's go to the next slide um, and I'm just gonna show you guys where in the transcript this was mentioned, right? It attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a, dis a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America where it's endemic. You need resources to force significant action. Okay, 
So thank you guys for, for participating in that activity with me. So now um, we're going to talk a little bit more ab about the Part C audio and what you need to, to be prepared for this part. So some of the skills you need are first, follow an extended presentation or interview on a healthcare topic like we just did, of course. Some of the things you need to be able to identify, um, identify the gist, right, which is like the main idea or the main themes of what you're listening to. You have to be able to identify attitude of the speaker. And lastly, opinion. What is the speaker's opinion about what they're talking about? In terms of how you can prepare um, and practice for this section, the first recommendation is podcasts, right? There's a lot, there's millions of podcasts out there about many different um, topics. This is a great way to engage with longer form audio. Um, and then of course, the next thing would be TED Talks, which you can find on YouTube as well. If you just search for TED Talks and then about some sort of um, anything that has to do with medicine or anything that has to do with your specific profession, you'll get a lot of results out there. And this is a great way to engage in practice as well. And then of course, you can see this little disclaimer at the bottom, make sure to use the transcripts. That is also something um, like we did today, important to, to think about. Okay, so um, I would like to open it up for questions. I do have a few quick resources to get through at the end, but I, I think taking questions is more important. So let's start out with that. Um, Feel free to write any questions you might have in, in the chat today. I know we kind of went through this very fast in order to be able to practice all three of the skills today, but hopefully it gave you the opportunity um, to have a taster of the types of audios you would, you would, be, you would encounter in OET listening, um, specifically the three contexts that we talk about today. So what questions do you have regarding um, OET listening? Feel free to write those in the chat. Okay, so while we're waiting for the questions, um, while people are typing those in the chat and thinking about what those questions might be, let's go ahead and go through those resources as well. Um, so to improve your listening before the test day, here are some resources that you can use. So first of all, of course, we have the, sem the sample tests, right, from the OET website. We have um, a growing number of sample tests available on our website, and you can find them for either the paper or the computer format. So of course, that's important to think about when you're considering which sample test to use. What is the test format that you'll be taking on the test day? Um, if you want more authentic tests, we have practice books and an OET official listening course on the OET store that of course you can purchase as well. Um, the next thing we have are three popular blog posts that outline the skills and preparation tips for each part of the listening test. Right, so feel free to search for these on our website or even just Google them um, and these should come up for you. These, these blog posts that talk more in depth about the three um, OET listening parts that you will engage with. And lastly, we have some podcast recommendations here. So the first thing we gotta do is get a podcast app. These are three that are available to you. Um, and then the other thing, once you have the app, is just to just search for topics that you're interested in. Um, here's some examples of um, podcasts that might be helpful for you to listen to. We have options from the US, the UK, and Australia, because as you heard today, with OET listening, you're going to be um, presented with different types of English. OET is, is designed as an international test of English for healthcare professionals meaning that at certain points you might engage with US English, UK English, Australian English. So um, that's why we have these different suggestions from different countries. You can start familiarizing yourself with different types of accents in English. All right, um, and that brings me to the end of my presentation for today. So let me go back and check in the audio, sorry, in the chat to see if there's any new questions that have come my way. 
I think the reason we're not seeing any questions, Jack, is because you did such a thorough job. Um, I think I think a lot of our audience is probably like, I have all the resources I need now um, to prepare for the OET listening. So um, we are so thankful to you and to um, the OET for that excellent presentation, for that very in-depth, um, super, super helpful presentation. Um, it allowed me to get a really great look into the OET and some great tips and tricks to help our um, test takers, which is the, the ultimate goal, right? Helping them prepare and do well on the OET. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know off the top of your head um, how many states will accept the OET as part of their licensure? Yeah, so um, currently for candidates that only have OET results, um, there are 40 states where you can use those results. Obviously, how those results are used gets a little tricky if you're applying directly with CGFNS or directly with the board or using it for visa screens. So there's a lot of um, caveats to that number. Um, but, but yes, for candidates that only have OET results, they can use them in 40 states um, in different ways. And of course, on our website, we kind of break that down for you, um, the different ways that it can be used in the different states. Absolutely. Yes. 40 states right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is way more than half of the United States, um, <laughs> which is absolutely awesome. Um, I think I'll, I see Adez just says USA on here, which. OK, we'll take it. all right. Yeah. USA, USA all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I am just going to say thank you one more time, Jack. If we see questions that come in the chat, guys, um, I am always happy to email Jack if I see questions or requests for information, requests for more. Um, he loves our feedback when we say, um, you know, what do test takers need? What what yes. do you guys need to help you prepare? Um, like I said, you the healthcare industry is their primary audience. It is their only audience, right? So very, very important to hear from you guys what you need to help you prepare. Um, but today was absolutely amazing. If you were not able to catch us live, of course, we are posted on YouTube. We are posted on Facebook. Um, so this is made available to you. So thank you so much, Jack, for joining us today. Um, I sincerely appreciate you and all the work of the wonderful people at the OET. But again, I'll be in touch with you, I'm sure, um, because there are three other sections of the OET yeah. that we need to deep dive into Absolutely. and that our nurses need to know how to prepare for. So, yes, please do stay tuned. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Stay tuned to the OET website for all of their amazing updates. You have a newsletter that comes out too, right? We do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, you go on their website, on website, you can subscribe to get their newsletter that has all the wonderful updates. Um, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I get that in my inbox. If not, someone yes. else is seeing the OET and sending me a newsletter. <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much, Jack. I'm going to cover some quick worldwide announcements just to close out Carrie's Corner. But again, thank you so much for being on the show, Jack. You are awesome, and we sincerely appreciate you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. So again, a special thank you, a special shout out to Jack and the wonderful people at the OET. Um, can we do a partnership? We are travel and tour operators. I don't, I, Eric, I don't think so. We are healthcare recruiting. Um, we do not do travel and tour. Uh, we are strictly healthcare, but good luck to you, buddy. Um, thanks for, thanks for watching the show. Uh, but again, thank you to Jack and the OET for a great presentation today. Uh, I do want to, Tracy messaged me. I have to pull it up in my, my special Tracy chat. Um, promoting our live stream this Friday in partnership with the PNAA, the PNAA and Worldwide Health Staff Solutions, helping nurses achieve excellence. Um, and then it's got a location. That I am not going to attempt to pronounce Tracy. So please make sure uh, we do have a live stream this Friday about our partnership with the PNAA. So specifically, if you're a Filipino nurse and you're interested in immigrating to the United States, we would love to have you tune into that webinar. And like Jack said, it's a great way to help you to 
prepare for your test. I do have a special guest who's going to stick his head on. Yep. Here's my dog, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he is telling me that it is time to wrap it up, mom, because it's time for me to go outside for a little bit. So from Sully, uh, my great Dane and myself, I just want to say thank you for stumbling into Carrie's Corner. But as a friendly reminder, don't face the corner, face the world with Worldwide. Is that right, Sully? Have a wonderful week, ladies and gentlemen, and stay safe out there. Bye.